Good evening. I'd like to call to order the City Council meeting for the City of Wheat Ridge, Colorado for May 10th, 2021. Um, in just a moment, you'll see the American flag on the screen. And when you do, if you would stand as you are able and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Hoppy. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to let you know that Councilwoman Gozeman is having um, problems with her computer. She's still working on getting into the meeting and um, uh, Ms. Sheck will keep an eye on her for when that happens. Okay, thank you very much for that for that notice. And we'll look forward to Ms. Dozman joining us when she is able. Um, would uh, would the clerk please call the roll of the members? Ms. Hoppy. Present. Ms. Hutchinson. Present. Mr. Ehrman. Mr. Urban, you're on mute. Uh, present. Ms. Halting. Present. Ms. Weaver. Here. Mr. Seitz. Present. And Ms. Nosler Beck. Present. Mr. Mayor, we have a quorum. We will make note as soon as she arrives that Council Member Dozman participated. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, two proclamations this evening uh, that I'm very pleased to, uh, to uh, recognize. Our first one is for a National Police Week. And with us tonight to accept the uh, proclamation is Chief Murtha and uh, Officer Holliday. And I want to thank you for joining us tonight. <clears throat> so this is a proclamation in support of National Police Week and National Peace Officers Memorial Day. Whereas Congress and the President of the United States have designated May 15 as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week uh, of and the week in which it falls as Police Week. And whereas the people of Colorado have shared in the grief of the tragic death of Officer Eric Talley, who gave his life to save others while on duty in Boulder, Colorado on March 20th, 2021. And Whereas it is important to recognize and honor the sacrifice made by those who are injured or who die in the line of duty. And whereas the members of the Wheat Ridge City Council and the Wheat Ridge Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of all who work, play, and live in our city. And whereas the past year created unique challenges for our community and increased risks for the men and women of the Wheat Ridge Police Department as they protected the health and safety of the department as well as the community in the face of the global COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas it is important that everyone know and understand the problems, duties and responsibilities of our police department and that our local law enforcement agency recognize, recognizes their duty to serve our community by safeguarding life and property, by providing protection against violence and disorder and by shielding the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression or intimidation. And whereas over the course of the past 52 years, the police department of the city of Wheat Ridge has grown to be a modern and scientific law enforcement agency, which tirelessly prov provides a vital public service in partnership with the law abiding members of our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Bud Starker, call upon all those living and working in Wheat Ridge and upon all of our community's patriotic, civil, and educational organizations to observe the week of May 9 through 15, 2021 as National Police Week, honoring law enforcement officers past and present who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to our community and in doing so have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all members of the community. <clears throat> I further, further call upon our community to observe 
May 15, 2021, as National Peace Officers Memorial Day, to honor those peace officers who, through their courageous deeds, have lost their lives or who have been injured in performance of their duty. In witness of this 10th day of May, 2021, Bud Starker, Mayor. And uh, I'd like to uh, uh, ask Chief uh, Murtha if he would uh, wanted to say a few words uh, about the National Police Week and this proclamation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I wanted to say that uh, the sentiments that you, you just read and, and that um, I think uh, are demonstrative of what we see in the Wheat Ridge Police Department are embodied by the, the officer I've asked to be here with us tonight, uh, a frontline officer who's been out there and really embodies all the best qualities of, of who we are in Wheat Ridge. Uh, and if you don't mind, um, instead of listening to my voice droning on, I'd like to save a few seconds for uh, Officer Kayla Holliday to express a few sentiments. Please. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me tonight. Um, on behalf of the officers of the Patrol Operations Division, I'm honored to accept this award. It's been a very challenging year for everyone and yet rewarding to still have, number one, the opportunity to serve our community, but above all, have much of our community's support. Well, thank you very much. We, uh, we appreciate you at the, Appreciate the work that you do in our community. It's a, it's a, it can be a dangerous job, as we all know, and uh, and a very trying. And and uh, you need to be quick on your feet and uh, and nimble in your mind to be able to render the service that you do to our citizens. We appreciate it. We appreciate your work, and we're we're glad that we can recognize National Police Week and the events that surround that. So thank you very much, uh, Officer Holiday and the Chief Murtha for joining us. Please expect extend our uh, our best thanks to the um, members, all the members of the department. So thank, I will. You. thank you, sir. Okay, we uh, have another proclamation um, in support of National Public Works Week. And we have uh, with us to accept the uh, proclamation, uh, Greg Knutson, our public works director and uh, Russ Higgins, who is one of our uh, key, uh, uh, key employees in the public works department. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. Whereas public works services provide in our community are an integral part of our residents' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an, under, of an understanding of an informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operations of public works systems and programs such as streets and highways, traffic signals and signs, lighting, bridges, storm services, drainage and fleet, and whereas the health, safety, and quality of life of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, construction, and maintenance are vitally dependent upon the efforts of skilled and skill of public works officials, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. And whereas the City of Wheat Ridge Public Works Department responsibly manages transportation, drainage facilities, and fleet operations in a safe, efficient, innovative, and environmentally responsible manner, utilizing our dedicated, highly skilled employees and partnerships to promote a high quality of life for the city and the public, and whereas the 23 employees of the department comprised of operations and construction services maintain more than 133 miles of streets, 36 miles of storm sewers, 9,500 street name and traffic control signs, 37 traffic signals, 350 street and pedestrian lights, 150 vehicles and pieces of large equipment, manages and administers all construction work in the public right of way, oversees capital improvement program maintenance projects and other related agency projects and other critical infrastructure activities. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Bud Starker, Mayor of the City of Wheat Ridge, do hereby proclaim the week of May 16 through 22, 2021 as National Public Works Week. 
in the city of Wheat Ridge, and I call upon all community members and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works services and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Signed this 10th day of May, 2021, Bud Starker, Mayor. And uh, I'd like to uh, invite Greg Knutson to, um, to say a little bit. And we also have uh, Russ Higgins with us. And I'm sorry, we also have Jim uh, Kelly with us from Public Works. Correct. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, Russ is our uh, field supervisor for construction services. And Jim Keeley oversees all of the operations side of uh, the services that we provide. And both of them do an excellent job overseeing the scheduling and completion of the various day-to-day -day maintenance and repair services required of our department. Um, the very appropriate theme of this year's National Public Works Week is Stronger Together. And like so many other public works organizations, we have emerged stronger with a stronger bond from working in harmony with our fellow departments and outside agencies to continue to provide unaltered essential services delivered seamlessly to Wheat Ridge citizens in 2020. Just as important, this special week is an opportunity to recognize the outstanding contributions of the department's fleet mechanics, maintenance workers, equipment operators, administrative assistants, engineers, engineering technicians, traffic technicians, and supervisors. While COVID-19 still prevents challenges in 2021, we will continue to show our strength through the knowledge we have gained from the past year, building on the strong bonds we have established and always looking forward to the future. Thank you again for this proclamation. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Knudsen, and uh, thank you, Mr. Higgins and Mr. Kelly for joining us tonight. And I hope that you will uh, pass on to your, um, to your, that's right, just give them a hand. <laughs> Your, um, your fellow associates and members of the Public Works Department, what a great job they do for us. And I was in the construction business for a long time. And so this is uh, kind of right up my alley. And, uh, and I know that it takes a lot of skill and dedication to be able to schedule this work and perform it, uh, a quality operation on, uh, on streets and, and facilities in the public right of way where you've got uh, traffic moving ne right next to you. And uh, I will just take a minute to remind all the public who might be listening to be very careful in traffic zones and, and with, uh, with workers working close to the public right of way, it can be a very dangerous uh, place to work. We appreciate your efforts to, uh, to bring us a great quality of life in our public works facilities and do it safely. So please, uh, please accept our thanks uh, on behalf of the council and uh, can, uh, thank you for a, a job well done. And uh, we look forward to your continuing work because I know we've got a lot of great projects coming up. So thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, our next order of business is the um, approval of the minutes. Uh, council, you have the uh, council meeting minutes of April 26, 2021 in your packet. Uh, if there are any changes, they can be noted now. Otherwise, we will let them uh, stay as presented. And I see no objections, so we will let those stay as presented. We are now at uh, approval of the agenda. And I know that uh, I'm going to recognize our attorney in a moment. Are there any other changes to the agenda that the uh, council wishes to make? And seeing none, I'd like to recognize our attorney, Mr. Dahl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd appreciate uh, the council taking a motion uh, to uh, conduct a very short executive session uh, after uh, the end of uh, tonight's meetings for the purpose of me giving you some uh, legal advice on the Joy Williams Barn historic designation. As council's aware, executive sessions can only take place during a regular or a special meeting. And so I've spoken with the mayor and, and the procedure that I think some council members will recall is that instead of adjourning the regular meeting tonight, uh, in as much as there is a study session, the, the, the mayor will recess the regular meeting for the purpose of taking the uh, study session. Once that's uh, concluded, the mayor will reconvene the regular meeting so that we can take a motion, which uh, Ms. Hoppy has to, to do the executive session 
and close the meeting at the end of the executive session. I will not need you to come back into open session for that purpose. And I think you separately have received an executive session Zoom link from me. So if you would add to tonight's agenda a, an executive session legal advice on the Joy Williams Barn historic designation, I would appreciate it. Okay, well, we will so note that. I'm going to uh, depend upon our uh, very capable Mayor Pro Tem, Ms. Hoppy, to um, before I gavel us out of this meeting to remind me that we're going into executive session for more business and more business after that. So we will um, we'll try to make that as seamless as possible. Thank you very much, Mr. Dahl. Okay, we will um, now move into our citizens right to speak. Uh, citizens may speak on any matter which is not on the agenda uh, for a maximum of three minutes right to speak. Uh, during the uh, virtual format, if you would raise your hand, which is uh, the little icon is located at the bottom of your screen, I believe in the, uh, in the participant uh, uh, icon. Um, what did I do here? I lost my screen. There we go. Um, then uh, we will bring you into the meeting. Uh, you'll have, uh, when you get into, when we recognize- Mr. Mayor, uh, yes, Mr. Urban. Uh, do we need to take a vote on the amendment to the agenda, or is that noted, or how, how does that work? Well, I will ask if there are any objections to uh, to Mr. Dahl's uh, oh. suggestion. Seeing none, then we will uh, we will let that be part of the record. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, when I uh, when you uh, come into the meeting to speak at the meeting, if you would please give us your first name and your last name, and uh, please spell your last name and uh, give us your address for the record. You'll have uh, three minutes to address the council, uh, and our uh, mayor pro tem will be the timekeeper timekeeper for your uh, for your remarks. So, is there uh, anyone with their hand raised in the Zoom format, uh, Ms. Sheck? Nope, no hands raised, Mayor. Okay, I'll give it uh, just another a few more seconds. If you have a, a uh, desire to speak, uh, it's citizens' right to speak on any item not on the agenda. Now is your opportunity. Please raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask to be recognized. Um, I'm just gonna ask, uh, we did have a hand. Um, Mr. McAllister, I saw your hand up there for a second. Would you like to speak? Yeah, I just want to make sure uh, he said not on the agenda. So is there going to be a section to talk about what is on the agenda? We will all, of, that... all of the regular items except the consent agenda. We will ask for public comment uh, during each each individual item. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, I don't. I don't have anything to say at this okay. moment. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And uh, we will we will uh, uh, have citizens. We'll have a, a right to speak on each agenda item. So thank you for asking. Is there anyone else that uh, that wishes to speak under citizens' right to speak? Okay, we will um, close our citizens' right to speak and go to agenda item number one. This is our consent agenda item. Mr. Urban, would you please uh, introduce agenda item one uh, A through E? Uh, does Ms. Hoppy have a question? had a, a clarification that um, we also don't take citizen comment on first readings because the purpose of first reading is to set the um, date for the public hearing. Thank you for that clarification. She is correct. Mr. Urban. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to introduce a consent agenda resolution number 21-2021, a resolution amending the fiscal year 21 uh, 2021 general fund budget to reflect the approval of supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $60,000 for the purpose of accepting a grant from CDOT and a contribution from Renewal Wheat Ridge for the purpose for the purchase and installation of pop up patios along 38th Avenue. Resolution 22 2021, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2021 general fund budget to reflect the approval of supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $50,000 for the addition of one time-limited full-time employee in the planning division of the Community Development Department to conduct building permit plan reviews and inspections. Resolution number 23-2021, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2021 open space budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $35,175 for the purpose of accepting a grant from the Colorado Health Foundation for Anderson Park Nature Play Area Phase 2. 
Resolution 24-2021, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2021 open space budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $5,000 for the purpose of accepting a grant on the early childhood uh, early, early childhood health outdoors for the Anderson Park play area. Resolution 25-2021, a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with the Jefferson County Open Space to accept trails grant in the amount of $466,141 for the Wadsworth Improvement Project. Thank you very much. This is agenda item number one, uh, the consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Urban, may I have a motion for, for uh, agenda items number 1A through 1E? I move to approve items 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, and 1E. Second. Thank you. Uh, second by Mr. Stites. Um, uh, would all those in favor of the motion please signify by raising your hands and will the clerk please record the votes? Once again, so you can hear it, the motion has passed unanimously, Mr. Mayor. Thank you much, very much, uh, Clerk Kirkpatrick. Um, we have no uh, hearings and ordinance on second reading, so we will go to our ordinance on first reading. And let me just uh, be uh, make a little explanation. Uh, the reason we do not take uh, public comment on, uh, on items on first reading is because first reading is to schedule the time, uh, place, and location, or the time, location, and, uh, and date for a public hearing. And we will take public uh, testimony during that public hearing. So we do not take it when we schedule first readings. So we will go to uh, agenda item number two. Mr. Stites, would you please introduce this item? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council bill number 05-2021, uh, an ordinance prohibiting deadly weapons on city property and making other amendments consistent with uh, state weapons laws. At issue, a growing concern exists today with the increase in gun and deadly weapon violence throughout the United States. These acts of violence contribute to increased personal safety concern for visitors and guests at city-owned or city-owned properties and for employees of the city. City-owned buildings and properties should be considered safe available and open. The lack of deadly weapons in those settings contributes to the sense of safety of visitors, guests, elected officials, and employees. Section 16-81 and 17-53 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws currently addresses weapons, but does not prohibit the possession of deadly weapons on city-owned property. Thank you. This is an ordinance on first reading. Set the time, date, and location for a public hearing. Uh, Mr. Uh, Stites, may I have a motion on this? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve Council Bill Number 05-2021, an ordinance prohibiting deadly weapons on the city property and making other amendments consistent with the state weapons laws on first reading, order it published, public hearing set for Monday, May 24th, 2021 at 7 p.m. as a virtual meeting and that it take effect 15 days after final publication. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Urban. Um, all those in favor of the motion signify by raising your hand and will the clerk please record the votes. Mr. Mayor, the motion has passed unanimously. Thank you. We will go to agenda item number three. Ms. Hutchinson, would you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council Bill number 06-2021 an ordinance reappointing presiding municipal judge Christopher Randall and approving a presiding Municipal Judge Services Agreement to issue the city's home rule charter provides for appointment of the municipal court judge for a term of two years. The current term of presiding Judge Christopher Randall expires June 30th, 2021. Thank you very much. This is an ordinance on first reading to set the date, time, and location for a public hearing. Um, Ms. Hutchinson, may I have a motion on this item? I move to approve council bill number 06, 2021, an ordinance reappointing presiding municipal judge Christopher Randall and approving a presiding municipal judge services agreement on first reading, order it published, public hearing set for Monday, May 24th, 2021 at 7 p.m. as a virtual meeting and that it take effect upon adoption at second reading. 
Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Hoppy. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, would you please signify by raising your hand and would the clerk please uh, record the votes? Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We will move to agenda item number four. Uh, Ms. Nossler Beck, would you please introduce this item? Thanks, Mayor. Council Bill number 07 2021. An ordinance amending section 16-103 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning regulation of noise. Um, at issue is City Council approved ordinance 1697 on October, August 24th, 2020. An ordinance amending section 16-103 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning the regulation of noise. The ordinance, among other things, established a permit process which allows up to six outdoor amplified sound events for the same location in a 12 month period. Consensus was reached by city council at the April 5th, 2021 study session to amend the ordinance to increase the number of individual permitted sound events from six to eight in a calendar year and to create a special permit process for all sound events over eight in a calendar year and make other clarifying amendments as described in the prior action section of the staff report. Thank you very much. This is an ordinance on first reading to set the date, time, and location for a public hearing. Uh, Ms. Nosler Beck, may I have a motion on this item? I move to approve council bill number 07-2021 and ordinance amending section 16-103 of the Wheat Ridge Code of Laws concerning regulation of noise. On first reading, order it published, public hearing set for Monday, May 24th, 2021 at 7 p.m. as a virtual meeting, and that it take effect 15 days after final publication. Thank you. Um, do I have a second? Uh, second by Mr. Urban. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand and will, uh, will the clerk please record the votes. Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, we will move to agenda item number five. Uh, Ms. Weaver, would you please introduce this item? Sorry, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a motion to approve, uh, to approve appointments of representatives to the 2022 Outside Agency Program Committee. Would you like me to explain the issue? If you would, please. The purpose of creating the 2022 Outside Agency Program Committee is to provide additional opportunity for residents to participate in the budget process. This committee gives residents the opportunity to weigh community needs with available resources to provide recommendations to City Council. Thank you. Uh, we will go to each uh, district and uh, for the uh, motion to, uh, to adopt or motion to elect. Ms. Hoppy, would you please uh, introduce a motion for the... Um, District number one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before I do that, I have a quick question. Um, in the recommended motion, <clears throat> it says that the appointment would be to the 2000 to the 2022 outside agency program committee. Um, from what I understand, they would be hearing um, the applicants from 2021. So should that be that they're in the 2021 outside agency program committee to expire in 2023? It's very confusing. <laughs> it's a great question. So typically, historically, the way that it's been is the year is the committee, but the funds are for the next year, which we're happy to, to change. It's the way it's been done historically, so I've kept it the same, but it is incredibly confusing. So I can, I can see why you had that question. Thank you, Marianne. I appreciate that clarification. Um, I move to appoint Steph Stefana Vaughn to the 2022 Outside Agency Program Committee, District 1, term to expire after the 2023 budget recommendations are presented in 2022. Thank you very much. And uh, Ms. Hutchinson, would you like to second that motion? Ms. Second. Hutchinson will second that motion. Um, uh, I guess I will go to see if there are, because I said I would, uh, are there any, uh, we'll go to... Um, uh, are there any questions on this, either from the public or from the uh, from the council? All right, all those in favor of the motion, signify by uh, raising your hand. Will the clerk please record the votes? 
Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Urban, would you please make the motion for District 2? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move to appoint Lisa Rucker and Kathy uh, McKee uh, to the 2022 Outside Agency Program Committee, District 2, term to expire, term to expire after the 2023 budget recommendations are presented in 2022. Thank you. And um, the second by Ms. Holtine, are there any, uh, is there any discussion on the motion either from the public or members of council? Uh, seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. I'll have the clerk record the votes. Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Weaver, would you please um, make the motion for District 3, please? Mr. Mayor, I move to appoint Sheila Red and Laura McGarry to the 2022 Outside Agency Program Committee, uh, District 3, with their term to expire 2023 uh, budget recommendations are presented in 2022. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Stites uh, seconds the motion. Is there any discussion on the motion from uh, council or members of the public? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand and will the clerk please record the votes. Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll go to Ms. Dozman to make the uh, motion for District 4 nominee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to appoint Carol Matthews to the 2022 Outside Agency Program Committee for District 4, term to expire after 2023. Budget recommendations are presented in 2022. Thank you. Um, and Ms. Nosslerbeck, do I have a second from you on that? Yeah, I'm trying to off of, get off mute. Second. Thank you very much. You, you did a great job on that. Is there any, um, are there any uh, questions from council or members of the public on this item? Uh, hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand and will the clerk please record the votes. Mr. Mayor, I have five votes aye. Are there any nay votes? I have three nay votes. Mr. Mayor, the motion has passed five to three. Okay, thank you so much. That will conclude item number uh, five on our agenda. We will now go to item number six. Uh, Ms. Dozman, would you please introduce this item? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 26-2021, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2021 capital improvement project budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation for the purpose of awarding a contract amendment and subsequent payments to Short Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated, Denver, Colorado, in an amount not to exceed $160,563.36 for professional services to complete the construction plans and specifications for Wheat Ridge Ward Station street improvements. Short uh, at issue Short Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated uh, was contracted to perform design services for several projects at the Wheat Ridge Ward Station area. Amendments to four task orders need to be approved to restart final design of the street and intersection improvements and prepare construction plans and specifications. A budget supplemental request is also required since all four task orders were paused in 2020 and were not included in the adopted 2021 budget. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Goff, do we have a staff presentation on this item? You know, we do. Uh, Mr. Westberg is here. If you have any questions, um, it's pretty straightforward. I did um, brief council on this a few weeks ago, and um, the city, the funding is coming from um, actually the city of Arvada. The city of Arvada owed the city of Wheat Ridge um, uh, money for previous design and right of way work that has been done at the uh, Wheat Ridge Ward. Um, TOD stations. So um, we have the funds to do this and um, we want to get these projects kicked off again up at the at the TOD center. So this will help us do that. So I don't know if Mark has anything to add to that. I, I really don't. We're just here to ask questions and uh, trying to get this all sorted up so we can start construction at the end of this year or early next year. Okay. Thank you very much. Before I go to questions from council, I would like to open this up to members of the public to, um, to speak on. If you would like to speak, now is your opportunity to speak on this. If you would raise your hand in the Zoom format or unmute yourself and ask to be recognized, we're happy to bring you into the meeting. Is there anyone, uh, Ms. Sheck, that has their hand up or Mr. Goff? Nope, Mayor, 
I'm sorry, this is Allie here. There's there's no one with their hand up. Okay, I'll give it just another uh, a few seconds here to make sure that people can find the right button to push. It can, it can be hard to find, I know. Challenges me. Okay, thank you very much. Then we will go to council and uh, see if there are any questions from council on this item. Okay, seeing none, Ms. Dozman, may I have a uh, motion on this? Yes, I move to approve resolution number 26-2021, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2021 capital improvement project budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation for the purpose of awarding a contract amendment and subsequent payments to Short Elliott Hendrickson Incorporated, Denver, Colorado, in an amount not to exceed $160,563.36 for professional services to complete the construction plans and specifications for Wheat Ridge Ward Station street improvements. And do we have a second by Mr. Uh, Mr. Stites? Is there a discussion on the motion from council? Uh, seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. Mr. Mayor, the motion has passed unanimously. Thank you very much. That brings us to item number um, Seven on our agenda, Ms. Hoppy, would you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to introduce resolution number 27-2021, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2021 general fund budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $24,000 for election services. At issue shortly after the 2019 ballot referendum process, Mr. Goff recommended that the city clerk's office engage the services of a consultant to evaluate, improve, and document procedures for both referendum petitions and coordinated elections. Funds are not currently appropriated for this purpose in the 2021 budget. I'd also like to read a little bit from the background. Impetus for the recommended election work in the city clerk's office began during the summer and fall of 2019 when residents circulated a referendum petition to reverse the zoning change approved by council on Upham Street to allow development of a new subdivision. Protests filed following the issuance of the certificate of sufficiency for the petition revealed the need to standardize and document procedures, not only for referendum peti petitions, but also for elections for mayor, city clerk, city treasurer, and city council. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Goff, do we have a staff presentation on this item? I think I'll let uh, city clerk uh, Kirkpatrick uh, speak to this item. Okay, Clerk Kirkpatrick. Thank you very much. Uh, this is pretty pro forma because we had planned to do this last year, but as she, as Councilmember Hoppe indicated, we spent that money reviewing a petition that was submitted to undo the zoning change for the Hardy property. Uh, given the pandemic, we delayed it until now, and it's my request that you approve this so that we can engage the professional services that would allow us to get this work done this year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Before I go to questions from council, I would like to go to uh, the public for public comment on this. Uh, members of the public, this is an opportunity to speak on this agenda item number seven. If you would like to speak on this item, please uh, raise your hand in the Zoom format or unmute yourself and ask to be recognized and we will bring you into the meeting. And uh, Ms. Sheck, do we have anyone with their hands raised? No? Okay. No, Mayor. A few more seconds here to make sure everybody can find the button. And, and if they wish to speak, they can speak. Okay. I don't see anyone raising their hands or, or going to speak. So I will open this up, uh, close the public uh, comment portion and open this up to questions from council. Anyone have a question on this from council? Okay. Seeing none, uh, Ms. Hoppy, may I have a motion on this item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve a resolution number 27-2021, a resolution amending the fiscal year 2021 general budget to reflect the approval of a supplemental budget appropriation in the amount of $24,000 for election services. And is there a second on this item? Second by Ms. Dozman. Uh, is there discussion on the um, motion? Okay, uh, seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand and we'll record, please record the votes. Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, that looks like the uh, 
the regular agenda we've uh, gotten through. So I will go to uh, city managers matters. Uh, Mr. Goff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just real quickly, we have still study session this evening. So um, we did receive the um, guidance uh, today from the uh, uh, US Department of Treasury on the American Rescue Act plan. Um, as, as you remember, the city of Wheat Ridge is projected to receive um, $6.7 million from this um, from Congress, uh, half this year and half next year. Um, unfortunately, the uh, guidance is is over 150 pages. So um, Ms. Sheck and I will be digging through that in the next week or so um, to uh, figure out how we can spend these dollars. So um, there's a lot of um, a lot of words here. So um, but I think we can put the money to some good use. So um, we'll get back to you as soon as we can on, on uh, what we learn. Thank you. I'm glad you got two copies. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we will go to city attorney's matters. Mr. Dahl. Uh, nothing tonight. I'll be able to speak with you a little later in the executive session. Okay. Thank you very much. We will uh, go to elected officials matters and I will start with our uh, clerk, Kirk Patrick. Nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't see uh, Mr. Miller, our treasurer, on the line, but if I if he's there and he would like to speak, and I don't see him now as an opportunity, but I don't see him, so we will go now to uh, Ms. Nossler Beck. Um, just hoping that everybody is going to join the mayor and every and um, all the community at the homeless conversation tomorrow evening. Um, and Patrick, I think. We have some resources to put towards that with, with your recent announce, announcement, so. We do, we do. <laughs> One eligible expense. <laughs> Great, thank you, Ms. Uh, thank you, Ms. Nossler, Beck, and Ms. Dozman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just wanted to give kudos to Local Works and the Wheat Ridge Historical Society. Um, my boys and I were able to attend the porches and patios pop up um, at the at the Wheat Ridge Historical Society Park for their Maypole. Uh, celebration and it was it was really awesome we spent some time fold uh, folding frogs from paper so we had like a little 30 minute seminar and both the boys uh, made little hopping frogs out of paper that they were really uh, excited about and um, they had some some good food and some smoothies from twisted smoothies and um, a local a local popcorn vendor and some some um, uh, Model T cars and and Victorian like authentic Victorian outfits. It was it was wonderful. Um, I met, we just missed the music. They were cleaning up as as we were we we were getting there, so we were pretty bummed about that. They have somebody that plays uh, a saw actually, um, and it's it's really incredible. Um, but I just I just it was a great turnout, a great time, and I just wanted to give them a shout out. Thank you very much. Um... Mr. Stites. Uh, nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. I'll just remind everybody to shop local and if you can find it, buy it in Wheat Ridge. Okay, thanks so much. Always a good thing to do. Ms. Weaver. Just had a question from a couple of weeks ago about the branch pickup. Um, I actually took my branches to Anderson, but there was no place to put them. So I took them back to uh, Prospect Park and I was just wondering if, if we could get an update on what the story is since we may have another opportunity to take branches somewhere tomorrow. Thanks. Yeah, thanks uh, council member Weaver. I think, and, and I'll, we'll get an email out tomorrow to, for clarification. My understanding is, um, you know, we have construction coming up at Prospect Park soon. So we didn't want to mulch, um, uh, grind uh, tree limbs and mulches there, mulch there. So we were um, accepting it at Anderson Park. Um, by the baseball field, it's my understanding and we should be able to um, drop limbs off there. If it's if it's not signed properly, I'll ask staff to make sure it's signed. Couldn't, I drove my truck around on a Saturday and could not find anything. And Is that recently, this last I did, I did the exact same no. thing. Oh, you did, okay. So you couldn't find the signs either. And of course, Saturday was not a good day to be in Anderson Park because everybody else was doing stuff, but um, yeah, if some signage would be great because I could not find it. It sounds like uh, Mr. Irwin couldn't either. Okay. Ms. Hutchinson, did you have uh, have something that would uh, il yes. illustrate? Your, uh, yes, I've been traveling around looking for where the branches go. And okay. at Anderson Park, there are like red 
kind of pedestals that are in the parking lot right by, uh, uh, I guess it's north of the baseball field. And I have seen where branches are between those um, things that stand up and the grass area where I've seen branches put out there. Because I even stopped and asked a code enforcement person about where do we put the branches and he didn't know. But then I did see branches over there. There's no signs, but you can put them over there. There's red things that are sticking up in the parking lot just north of uh, the baseball field. We'll make sure, yeah, it doesn't sound like it's signed very well. So we'll, we'll make sure we get it signed and the information out on social media. Thank Thanks you. For that up. Yep. Thank you very much. Looks like we've got a lot of uh, at least uh, city council activity in the branch uh, delivery business. So good to see we're taking care of, uh, care of our trees. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Holtine. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess we are, we are at the council branch of government. So <laughs> um, oh, you stole that from me. Oh yeah, it's, sometimes it's good to be the junior counselor. So um, just a couple of quick things. I just really wanna thank and recognize our police officers and our public works department. Um, both departments really contribute to the safety and well-being of our community. And um, some of it's really uh, apparent to a lot of us and a lot of it's behind the scenes and it's all important. I think uh, those are two departments that, that make me Wheat Ridge proud and um, I'm excited and grateful to recognize them tonight. Um, the other thing I just want to mention, uh, you know, the, the city has really upped its game in terms of making our uh, various commissions and boards accessible and available to our community members, both by uh, posting the links to sit in on the meetings, as well as uh, I think a pretty good job of posting the agendas and the minutes for those and um, encourage people uh, find something you're interested in and, and attend one of the meetings to understand you know, how our citizens contribute to our city. Uh, this Wednesday is the Cultural Commission meeting at six o'clock. Uh, I plan on attending, um, but I really encourage people, this is a great time to dabble in uh, civics. It's never been more accessible and it's a great way to understand uh, how it's not just us, but uh, a huge group of people in our community contributing every week to what makes our government great. So. That's all I got. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Holtine. Uh, Mr. Urban. Uh, nothing this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Hutchinson. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Hoppy. Nothing tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Chief Murtha, you, you, got a, you got a small chance to say a couple of words earlier in the meeting. Is there any, uh, any closing comments you'd like to have for us tonight? No, just thank you. Well, yes. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Appreciate that. The newer, younger men and women of this department really need it. It's a tough, it's been a tough year and it's a tough time in law enforcement. And during this week, um, we, we've already received a ton of support. We always receive uh, good support, great support from our council. So I appreciate that. And uh, I'm, on a side note, I'm really happy to say that I, I get to go out of Wheat Ridge and go to all the restaurants that I think a lot of the people on this call have kept afloat. So that's a great thing. And I, I do appreciate that about Wheat Ridge and the, and the people who work here. So thank you for that. And thank you for the moment, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And, uh, and once again, uh, we're happy to, uh, to recognize our, our public safety uh, team. They do a great job in our community. So please pass that on. Um, let's see, I, I know we've got, to, we've got some other meetings to get to tonight. So I'll be, uh, be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty brief. Um, my wife and I were, uh, were really pleased to, uh, to visit uh, Porches and Patios, the historical park that Ms. Dozeman talked about. Great event out there. And, and uh, I would have joined in the Maypole, uh, uh, Maypole celebration, but I was actually filming it. So I wasn't able to do both. And I just decided it was better for me to be a photographer. But we had a great, great tour of the facilities and, uh, and great, uh, great enthusiasm. And uh, and Ms. Dozman, I'm sorry you missed the band because they were really good. They, uh, you know, banjos and, and the mandolins and, and the fiddles and, and, uh, and I didn't see the saw, but it wouldn't surprise me. But it was a great, great event for our city. And if you're ever able to go out to, uh, to uh, the, the uh, historical uh, park over there on just off of 44th, uh, please, uh, please do that. Uh, I wanna thank all the attendees who joined my coffee with the mayor last Saturday. Always great to have people come and, uh, and tell me, uh, tell me how, what they think is going on in our city and, and uh, sort of have a great opportunity and a great discussion. And, and I really hope that uh, 
that we will have good attendance at tomorrow night's community meeting on homelessness. It starts at 6.30. We've got some terrific speakers from a wide variety of angles coming at this. This is a, this is a community and really a national, a national issue that we're trying to get our hands around. And uh, I think we've got some great, great things going on in our city and county, and I hope everyone will, uh, will um, be able to, to join that meeting. So let me see, let me get to my notes so I don't, uh, I don't get to the wrong, uh, the wrong activity. But I think what I'd like to do is to recognize our Mayor Pro Tem, Ms. Hoppy, to, uh, to uh, read a motion for us. Um, um, Mr. Mayor, I believe what, what we need is to put this meeting in recess for the purpose of a study session. After the study session, then we will come back to uh, the business meeting and then I will read the uh, motion to put us in executive session. Okay, uh, then Mr. Dahl, I just need to, uh, to announce the recess. Yes, I uh, just uh, say that the regular meeting will be in recess while the, while the council conducts the um, uh, study session. Okay, the regular meeting will be and now stand in recess <laughs> until the council uh, finishes its study session. And, and now you can certainly uh, call the study session to order and just go through that agenda for the study session. Okay, I would uh, like to call to order our study session agenda. We have a, uh, it's called to order a, study, a special study session agenda for the city council for the city of Wheat Ridge. We have uh, two, uh, uh, two agenda items on this. The first item is the uh, Lutheran Legacy Campus Master Plan Update. And um, number two is the Strategic Priority Streamlining Permitting and Licensing. And because we did not take public comment earlier in the meeting, I will ask if there is any public comment on either one of these items. And if you would like to comment on either one of these, please raise your hand in the Zoom format or unmute yourself and we will bring you into the meeting. I'll give it just a moment for anyone to respond to this. Okay, seeing none, we will close the public comment on this item and uh, go to item number one is the Lutheran Legacy Campus Master Plan update, Mr. Goff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have uh, uh, Lauren Michalak and Stephanie Stevens here this evening from our community development department. Um, Stephanie is our project manager on this case. Um, and uh, you, you've all mentioned several times you attended the, uh, the uh, master plan um, uh, open house event uh, a week or so ago on a sat hot Saturday day. And um, that was kind of the kickoff uh, to our master planning process. And uh, Stephanie is here and Lauren tonight to give you an update on Kind of what's coming up and not looking for any direction this evening but uh, more of an update looks like we have our uh, consultant team with us also um, tonight but lauren did you want to start off or straight to stephanie yeah just minimally for those of you who got to see us outside of the zoom box and for those of you who saw stephanie um you know she's expecting a baby soon so stephanie and i are sharing this project it will continue when she takes off with a little one You'll see more of Stephanie for the next couple months and she's taking lead tonight and then more of me a little bit later this summer. Um, so I'll let Stephanie kick us off and then introduce our consultant team. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. It's a surprise to everyone since, you know, we only see days up right now. But yeah, I'm Stephanie. I'm a planner in community development, taking the role for the time being as a city project manager for the Lutheran Legacy Campus Master Plan. Um, and with us tonight is our consultants, Jay Rankins and Mike, or Mark, sorry, Mark, Mark Dilatory. Not that I talk to him very often or anything, but they're with MIG Inc. And uh, Mark is leading us kind of on the consultant project manager side of things. And I'll turn it over to them just quickly to introduce themselves before I present. Great. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Jay Rinkins with MIG, principal with the firm, uh, director of Denver Area Operations, and director of firm planning and design services. I'm Mark Delatari. I'm a senior project manager in planning and design services, and firm wide director of visualization, and a very proud Wheat Ridge resident. So happy to be here tonight. Welcome. Sorry, mute button problems. Okay, here we go. So I will go ahead and share my screen now. Uh, 
Okay, just let me know if you have any issues seeing what's going on. That's good. All right. So the Lutheran Legacy Campus Master Plan, this is a joint effort between the City of Wheat Ridge and SCL Health, as well as our MIG team. And MIG also has sub-consultants on board to help with the technical analysis portion. So that's EPS, Fair and Peers, and the ABO group. So they'll be helping with the traffic analysis, utilities, and that kind of thing. And just what we'll be going over tonight, just a little bit of background, but we know you've seen a lot of that. So we'll keep that short, uh, where we're at in the process and outreach, our current phase and next steps. And in terms of background, so SCL Health came to us back in October or November-ish with questions about potential change on the campus. Um, that's when it came to our attention that we have no guiding documents in place that contemplate basically anything other than a hospital. So after that, we came to council for the study session in November about the need for the master plan. So by January, um, council had awarded the contract to M MIG to help us with the planning process portion. And we kicked off the process, which is anticipated to last about eight months. So going over context just briefly, we'll keep it short, but the background information is in your packet. Um, so we're looking at 8300 West 38th Avenue um, between 38th and 32nd, as well as Allison and Dudley. And while not obvious on the surface, the site has evolved quite a bit over time. The hospital tower came into play a little bit later um, additions to the hospital itself, the medical office buildings, hospice care. So it's changed, but it's just been over a period of time. And our hope with this process is to continue the evolution, but retain parts of the campus, the culture, and the feel. So SCL now owns and operates the 26-acre parcel at Clear Creek Crossing. We don't know exactly what that means for this existing campus, but we do know that the idea is to move the hospital services to the new campus. Nothing has been approved yet, but we do have a land use application in for review on that. And the takeaway here is that some services might stay, others might go, but SCL Health and other third party owners on the site haven't yet finalized the plans. We will inform as we know more throughout this process. So they're working parallel together. And no matter what, this, this does present a rare opportunity that we get to see a master plan, a comprehensive plan type document for such a long-term legacy portion of the, of the city of Wheat Ridge, um, just getting to reevaluate that in the heart of the city. So this slide is just a reminder of what the process is. This is an excerpt from our comprehensive plan and the master plan that we're looking at is falls into that comprehensive plan amendment category. It will need to be adopted by council, which is anticipated to occur in October. And the structure plan that's shown on the screen um, shows the campus with a blue um, indication with a hospital use and a purple star. That basically means it's reserved for public uses and employment uses. And the plan does designate the property for community and neighborhood anchors. So not a lot to go off of if the site were to change. Um, and the zoning on the site is also planned hospital district, which only allows for hospital and ancillary uses. But it's through this master plan process that we can explore future uses, um, expand and update that list. And keep in mind that this is a long-term plan. It spans, could span over 20 years. And it's intended to be visionary and guide future entitlements. So this is not an evaluation of zoning or site development. Those will come later and will be subject to future public processes. So just a quick update on process and outreach before I turn it over to MIG. Um, the goal of this project is to create as many touch points as possible with the community and with you all to inform the plan. The public imp input process includes many ways to be involved, including our online engagement through What's Up Wheat Ridge, 
Um, we'll also have four stakeholder meeting, committee meetings. The stakeholder committee group was formed early on in the process based on your recommended selections. So thank you for that, as well as selections from SCL Health. And the first meeting took place in April and the summary of that meeting was provided in your packet. We'll have four total public meetings, the first which took place on May 1st in the public tour format. And we had great turnout on that. And we're now finalizing focus groups, which will be smaller community groups comprised of adjacent neighbors, community at large and business owners. We'll have three groups in total, two meetings with each group for the focus groups. And the first is being scheduled here in the next couple of weeks. And then lastly, we'll have two study sessions with you all and planning commission. One taking place now, we had planning commission on the 6th and the other is slated for August. So we'll be back with more information on that in a couple of months and we'll bring preliminary recommendations and draft plans for your review at that point. And then the adoption hearing is anticipated for October. So a total of about eight months process. And with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to MIG to give more details on the engagement process. Great, thank you, Stephanie. Um, so one quick thing here we wanted to highlight is a master plan um, can actually mean a lot of different things. Um, if you think about a developer developing a master plan, it often is very, very specific about the uh, footprints of the buildings, uh, the actual size of the pipes, uh, sometimes the architectural detail. Um, a master plan also um, can mean uh, that we're creating a development framework, uh, providing direction for land use uh, to fit into that larger structure plan and the comprehensive plan, um, thinking about key connections um, and that level of detail. And that's really what we mean in this process. It's really meant to be a supplement to or complement to the comprehensive plan and be a way for the community to express their desire um, in aligning with the, the direction for the property owner SCL Health in thinking about the future of not just this site, the neighborhood uh, surrounding and the larger community and even region. Um, and so our approach is looking at this foundation, uh, thinking about that right level of detail, uh, considering the different parameters and sideboards for development that may occur, and then really working with the community to figure out how we're aligning uh, the values of the community with the value of the site for SCL Health um, and a potential developer in the longer term. When we think about the schedule, one of the things that we wanted to highlight, uh, Stephanie pointed out that we're really looking at about an eight to nine month process. Uh, but if you look below the second bar here, task two, public engagement, uh, all purple squares, um, both the filled in purple squares in terms of what's up Wheat Ridge, uh, but also those with the uh, white uh, diamonds within them uh, represent different community engagement opportunities. So those include uh, direct opportunities with uh, different uh, community members, uh, focus groups, as uh, Stephanie was just calling out. Uh, we will have public meetings in addition to the, uh, the event that we did on May 1st, uh, that walking tour, as well as stakeholder committee meetings, which we did our first meeting already, and we're excited to work with them moving forward. And as we move through this, we want to think about how do we um, really engage the public in the most meaningful way possible. And we're going to be flexible in that. Uh, we have carved out a public engagement plan, um, kind of considering our current circumstances. But uh, depending on uh, you know, if certain restrictions are lifted, if certain uh, maybe opportunities don't actually present themselves, um, that we can use both online engagement as well as in-person engagement opportunities uh, to really create the best opportunity possible for the community to tell us what they would like to see on the site. And so that's something that we'll be sort of navigating throughout this process and doing our very best to make sure that we're having the most meaningful conversations possible and getting the best input possible uh, to carve uh, the best plan uh, moving forward. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mark. Thanks, Jay. So it was great getting to see some of y'all a couple Saturdays back now. It's a hot Saturday. Um, but I want to give you a quick just rundown of, of the event itself, the walking tour. It was about a 0.85 mile loop, three stations on there. Lots of informational signage throughout and activities at all those stations so that community members alongside staff and consultants could, could learn a little bit about the project, right? As a resident, I was learning a lot of really exciting things. So I wanted to talk about that with all of the neighbors and community members ahead of an actual public meeting where you might come in with, hey, here's our existing conditions. Here's the vision. What's your goals? 
we wanted to make sure that we started at more of a fact finding kind of tour of like, hey, here's some great things we're learning about the, the history, the, the community, the process. And we wanted to give the community chances to weigh in. Some of those took the form of you know thought exercises. And if y'all came to my station, you heard me say thought exercise, y'all know I was just trying to trick you into doing early morning Saturday math. But some of that was trying to figure out how big the buildings are, how tall they are in relation to other types of buildings. And it was just, it was interesting for me to learn some of this through the process. So I wanted to make sure that as, as the community came to the site to understand kind of the, the physical space that we had some of those conversations themselves. Other activities we had about understanding how folks were getting to campus. I was assuming a lot of folks were actually gonna drive, vast majority walked, right? So that was really exciting to see about the immediate neighbors who were there on site having conversations with us. We asked a lot of questions about some of the things that we're learning, you know, how many parking spaces are on campus, how many, how many cars go by each day on 38th. And we had little flip panels for folks to find out those facts about how many spaces go unused on campus, you know, three and a half mile high stadiums of, of space go unused of just asphalt. So things that were just like interesting facts that we wanted to make sure that our community members knew as we thought about how to engage and ask questions moving forward. At the end, like I said, it was less about a traditional first public meeting of here's everything that we know about existing conditions, what's your vision, what's your goals, and really just starting with conversations. So we got to talk to a lot of different people from from two to 92, uh, you know, a lot of diverse opinions. So I think it was a really exciting start to the process, which as Jay and Stephanie noted, there'd be a lot of opportunities to come to provide additional input. Great, uh, thanks Mark. Um, so if you wanna go to the next slide, Mark, um, we just wanted to give you a quick highlight of some of the analytical components uh, of the effort. Um, and because as, as we're having community conversation, we want to make sure that we're uh, facilitating uh, an educational component to make sure that we're getting informed input um, so that people are really able to weigh the trade-offs accordingly and then provide us the best uh, direction possible. And so there's a component of land use and zoning. Uh, there's a element of updating the structure plan for the comprehensive plan effort. Um, thinking about the visioning for future land use and development and making sure that, that is in fact grounded in these technical analyses that I'll highlight really quickly. And then what we're calling a development framework, uh, which again is providing those sort of sideboards. What are the, the major sort of, what's the major armature that we want to provide on the site? And how is that going to guide future development and make sure that, that ties into the surrounding community the best way possible? Um, so on the next slide, uh, we can see in the market analysis, working with our partner EPS, Economic and Planning Systems, we'll be looking at conditions and trends summary, uh, developer stakeholder outreach, thinking about the site capacity um, and the competitive positioning analysis and the development demand estimates. So a really important thing here, and this came up in our uh, presentation of Planning Commission last Thursday, is thinking about how can the site in fact be complementary to what else is happening nearby and across uh, the community and even regionally, uh, rather than uh, what was actually termed as sort of cannibalization, uh, a competitive, um, you know, sort of idea or vision for the site, uh, we actually want to make sure that it act is complementary to uh, the things that are happening nearby and across the community. On the next slide, you'll see the traffic analysis. We want to think about uh, what is the current uh, traffic and parking demand on the site, which rel is relatively high considering that it's a medical use, uh, but what also could we project um, across the community um, and make sure that we're not creating undue uh, demand or stress on certain parts of the network, um, either in a particular neighborhood or on one of our major arterials, and really thinking about how do we create multimodal connections and, uh, and sort of demand management uh, for transportation uh, across the site. And then the next slide you'll see uh, the last component here is working with the ABO group uh, and looking at the facility assessments. So understanding what is the potential of existing buildings on the site? Could some of those potentially be reused? Uh, what are the environmental constraints associated with those? As well as uh, what is a functional uh, sort of repurposing uh, opportunity uh, when you think about either health uh, or other uses moving forward. And so we'll want to make sure that we're working with the overall site, leveraging the existing trees, the topography, um, and potentially these buildings uh, to make the best master plan possible. Um, and I, there's one more point to note as it relates to existing conditions, and I, I didn't mention this before Jay jumped in there, but 
who recall from the schedule, we're lagging a little bit behind in that point in the process right now. And that's largely due to the fact that we wanna make sure that we have a full set of data to work from. So we've been working uh, pretty relentlessly with Stephanie and Lauren and the whole team to make sure we're closing all those gaps as it relates to traffic impact studies and utilities data. So we're starting to build a pretty complete picture at this point and we're getting close to start making some kind of preliminary takeaways. So just wanted to give that one point of clarification there. Other than that, I'll hand it back over to, to Stephanie. Yeah, I think at this point, we'll just open it up to questions. That um, basically sums up our presentation and where we're at. Okay, thank you very much. That's a great uh, great to have, uh, have this sort of early synopsis about what's going on. We'll open it to questions from council. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, just so council knows that th this will be the front page um, story on our uh, uh, next edition of Connections, so which comes out um, in a couple of weeks, I believe, right, Ali? So yeah, exactly. Yeah, a couple of weeks. So that remember that goes to every address in the city, business and residential. So um, uh, that'll be um, one way we'll get um, this information out as as much as we can. You know, I, you know, I, in processes like this, unfortunately, we always hear from a few folks that say they didn't know anything about it. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna do everything. E even the people that showed up at the open house, they said they didn't know anything about it, but. Um, they were there. Um, so, but we're going to do, we're going to do our darndest to make sure that we get out, uh, make sure that everybody in this community knows about this. It's a long, it's an eight month process. So there's going to be many, many opportunities for um, connections with our community as, as they said. So, um, and the connections article will be one of the first uh, major uh, um, publications that, that speaks to this project. Terrific. Well, I want to kick off the uh, questioning with with a term that I was not familiar with, and that is the adopted structure plan. And uh, can someone explain what that is? Sure. So that's part of the comprehensive plan um, land use designation. So that's a primary purpose of the comprehensive plan is to help guide the zoning. So then if someone comes in and wants um, commercial where the comp plan calls for residential, or in this case, if you wanted commercial, it's dedicated in the comp plan or reserved in the comp plan for um, public uses and employment uses only. Okay, so that's that really changes sort of the structures that might be placed on the property. Yes, use-wise. Types of uses. In yeah. Yeah, we don't have a parcel based sort of future land use map, which is what you see some communities have. And in fact, I, I don't I bet this may be the first time council seen the entire structure map zoomed out. You often see one tiny little excerpt when we bring a zone change to you. We've just sort of cropped the rest of the image, but that's what that cropped image comes from is the structure map. Okay, thank you. Uh, additional questions from council. This uh, whole team. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Less a question and more just uh, just a compliment. It's neat to see so much community engagement, um, you know, both structurally at different points in the process, but also across different aspects of our community. Um, I think it's it's. I went to the first one and I love the educational component while also soliciting input from our community on these higher level pieces of what this um, process looks like. And I really, I think in particular, like the sort of reporting back and feedback that's incorporated in this. A lot of times we take the input once and then it kind of just disappears behind a curtain and then just shows up in a polished format somewhere. So I think it's just, it's really thoughtful and thorough. And I appreciate that a lot about this particular project. So I know a lot of community members are pretty passionate about, you know, the current Lutheran and what's coming next. Um, and actually, I guess I do have a question. I hadn't really thought much about uh, the assessment of the existing mature trees that are on site and some of the other natural resources. I'd like to hear a little bit more about um, what, and it sounds like there's a sub consultant on that, but just what that process would look like and what kind of recommendations might come forward from that. Yeah, I can start and maybe Mark wants to join in as well, but um, that's actually an MIG lead um, in thinking about the existing topography, natural resources on the site. Um, so there is a great tree canopy. Uh, there's the ditch and sort of natural area in the middle of the site, which interestingly enough, there were, um, and I mentioned this for anyone who was sitting on Thursday, I apologize for the repeat, but um, you know, some folks on the tour who were really excited to actually learn about the natural resources on the site and how beautiful, you know, certain aspects were. And other people, they they check them out every Saturday, 
Um, it's part of their kind of daily routine. Um, but it's really important to us to kind of work with the nat natural topography. Um, for those who have been on the site recently or um, maybe ever, but um, you know, check it out. There's actually pretty dramatic topography across the site. Um, it's something that I think can makes it really unique. Um, and so we want to make sure that the, the future development and the parameters that we're creating uh, work with that, help to preserve that, and leverage those existing resources uh, because that's something you can't create um, honestly, like in the in the short term in a development. Um, so the more we can work that in, the better because it's going to give it a natural patina. It'll help it kind of work into the community as a whole um, and be a resource uh, for residents moving forward. Yeah, I think maybe I build off of that. Council member Olteen, um, from the, the tree standpoint, I think working with city departments, forestry, and then from the built form side of it, that's the ABO group. And that's really engaging the facilities department, both for the SEL Lutherans operations, as well as the MOVs, which operate separately under the same campus. So um, Ron Abo uh, has been in, in the thick of it on uh, facilities tours and is building a qualitative matrix as a first pass at that. And then we'll be working to refine that moving forward. Wonderful. Well, I'm really encouraged to hear that there's a focus on preserving some of the trees on that campus because they are big heritage trees and I believe they're housing my favorite great horned owls right now. So uh, I want to make sure they come back every year. So thanks for the good work, you guys. Thank you. Additional questions or comments from Council? Uh, Ms. Hutchinson. Thank you, Ms. Kamir. I do like the idea of reuse of some of the buildings. Um, I believe it's, uh, I've been reading about Loretta Heights where that's an old school, long time. And that is a consideration that they are doing there. And I think the architecture of the present hospital is wonderful. I haven't heard anything though uh, tonight about um, the historic part of the buildings, the chapel and the blue house. So any information about that? I know that they were circled on the tour as being historic, but I didn't hear anything about that tonight. So do you have any information? Sure, I can jump in there, Councilmember Hutchinson and, and Stephanie, Lauren, if you want to follow up. Um, so I, I did zip through it pretty quickly there in the presentation. That was one of the many kind of did you know slides. Uh, both the Blue House 1905, I want to say, and the chapel in the early 30s, certainly cultural and community assets with great, you know, uh, I think emotional historic value. They are not currently registered. They're privately owned by SCL. So as part of this process, that's something that we'd certainly look to the community to as Jay pointed out, to understand those trade-offs about the uh, importance of preservation of, of assets, both historic and cultural on site to make sure that SCL understands the importance from the community's perspective. So um, we did have a number of, of, of information boards and they'll, they'll be on the website as well as we start to launch the virtual tour for those who are not able to attend on May 1st, but um, I, I definitely part of the process as we look to identifying um, potential for use and, and uh, things of that nature. And just to add quickly, so just as we're not like kind of evaluating site specific elements at this time, we won't be able to, you know, evaluate the facilities themselves or the chapel and the blue house themselves to see if they could be reused, but that could come out as an action item as part of this plan that would then, you know, look into being able to make these historic historic designations but we are hearing this comment a lot so you're you're very reflective of the community's desire to keep those things and it can definitely be incorporated into the plan as an action item thank you mm -hmm. thank you uh, additional questions or or comments from council I, I had one, I had another one. I went to the went to the meeting and and had, you know came away with more questions than I guess I thought. There, um, how many different property owners do we have on the site, and and how do you think that will uh, influence the the uh, opportunities that we have? I I happy to chime in, Mayor. It's just the one. It's just SEL. Uh, there are land leases for other properties that are currently functioning on site. So the MOBs are land leased through SEL, but SEL is the landowner for the 100 contiguous acres. Okay. 
and the, the time frame on the leases are they are they long term leases, the ground leases? That's a great question. I do not have those numbers off the top of my head, but we do have that in that impressive matrix I was alluding to earlier. So I can make sure to pull those and get those um, over to, to staff and on your way. Thank you. Additional discussion. Well, we've got a lot of talent here. Let's let's pepper them with questions. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll, I'll fill the airspace. You'll continue to get some emails from us as we proceed through our next rounds of public um, involvement so that we can rely on each other to help get the word out. Um, we'll continue to push people towards the What's Up Wheat Ridge page where people can um, subscribe and register to get updated themselves or to the Mayor's Matters where we'll keep putting in a little monthly update. So we, with a citywide project, we're not doing direct mail um, besides things like the connection. So we really appreciate everyone's help and, getting as many voices uh, involved as possible. How was our turnout for the May 1st event? Counting my sign-in sheet, we had at least 60 people there. So pretty good turnout. Very good. Of those who signed in, mind you. Right. Right. It felt like more. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to get everybody to sign a piece of paper sometimes. All right. Any anything else that we that we've got for our consultants or our, our team uh, working on the legacy campus? Great, going to be a great project. I, I'm just really excited that this is a great opportunity in the city. All right. Well, I you know I don't hear any more questions. So uh, going once, going twice. Any anything else anyone wants to wants to pipe up on this project at this time? I know we're uh, we're looking forward to having more uh, you know more outreach to the public. I know that that uh, the discussion that I heard around the around the uh, the the tents that I was listening to from the public is uh, is you know maybe I, I, I didn't know about this. I hope they I hope they publicize this widely. So I think that uh, you know it looks like you all are really well tuned into that uh, to that paradigm. And I think that those are uh, that would be be great if we can really make uh, make this. A robust outreach, and it looks like we've got it designed to do that. So thank you for that. Okay. Thank you for having us. Mayor and Council will be back yes. in a couple months. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thanks for coming tonight. We appreciate it. We will send you on your way. Bye. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. What uh, what else do we have on our that was uh, agenda item number one. We will go to agenda item number two, our uh, strategic priority streamlining, permitting, and licensing. Um, Mr. Goff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are back um, in front of you again this evening um, with one more of your strategic priorities um, that came out of the Euro retreat back in February. And um, Ali Sheck is the team lead on this with. Um, but a bunch of uh, team members, though, um, on this on this uh, strategic party. So she is here to again, as we did um, in the last week, couple weeks, the last couple meetings, um, give you a summary of what we thought we heard from city council at the retreat and um, get some consensus if we are moving in the right direction. So I'll turn it over to Allie. Thank you, Mr. Goff. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Allison Sheck, Administrative Services Director. Mayor, I owe you an apology. I, my Zoom kind of froze up a couple of times when I think you were waiting for me to unmute the public. And um, there wasn't any, but I was frozen. So my apologies for that. That's okay. um, but it's great, great to see you this evening. Um, again, excited to be back to talk about um, another of your priorities um, as determined at your strategic planning retreat back on February 20th, 2021. I'm joined tonight by Lauren Mikulak, our planning manager, who you know very well, and also Mark Colvin, our finance manager. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Um, we'll be here for um, questions and answers, and we'll, we'll tackle that as a team. Uh, there are some other members on our team that those include Steve Art, our economic development manager, and Mike uh, Tyson, who you've met, our chief building official, and some others. So I am going to share my screen and uh, we're just going to run through a really uh, brief presentation. And then again, we'll take your, your questions and answers, your, your questions. We'll answer them, hopefully. 
Okay, so little background. Um, we are here to talk about um, streamlining permitting and licensing. And on the screen, we have some notes that were taken from your comments on your on the pre-retreat survey that you took. Um, these were also captured on flip charts at the, at the retreat and then also from staff notes. So here's what we heard. Um, streamline the process for permits, inspections, and business licensing, um, building and economic development areas, permit concierge, small businesses don't understand the process, need more tax education, and wraparound services for businesses. So those were some of the comments um, that we heard. So based on that, and based on your discussion at the retreat, here's our understanding of this priority. And again, at the end, we're gonna to wanna to confirm that we're on the right track. And that is to improve the permitting and licensing processes for businesses with an emphasis on small business and to provide helpful educational materials to make processes clear, transparent, which means no surprises with good handoffs internally. That's what we, that's what we heard. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren Mikulak to talk a little bit about some of the work that's currently underway. Thanks, Ellie. Um, so I'm here tonight not representing just the planning division, but really our department as a whole. Um, Mr. Johnson is out today, and I'm happy to reflect back on the NRS. Um, so many of you will recall that the 2019 NRS, the Neighborhood Revitalization Strategy, it had several recommendations. Um, and the two primary recommendations <clears throat> are the ones we've spent the most maybe time and focus on so far, investing in our commercial corridors and engaging our neighborhoods. Um, but if you made it all the way to the second to last page uh, in that final document, it was a third recommendation that specified uh, to facilitate investment through customer service. Um, and in terms of that NRS document, what that meant is to identify tools and resources that can assist businesses and homeowners in making investments in our existing buildings, which are often older and just more challenging to work with. And so to that end, um, we have done a couple of things. So we did update the building codes in 2019. And as a part of that, we adopted the international existing building code, the IEBC. Um, that gives us more tools when we're trying to repurpose older buildings. And that went into effect last year. Um, we've also made a concerted effort to keep the same uh, inspector, building inspector, on a given project to maintain consistency. Um, it gets harder to do with multi-year projects, with bigger multi-year projects, but it has been working. Um, and that was specifically a recommendation of the NRS. Um, as you know, we have shifted our customer service to a virtual model through COVID, uh, while City Hall has been closed to the public. And so we're circling back now. Um, as we anticipate a reopening and we're really trying to refine those processes to be a sustainable long term option for those who prefer electronic uh, submittal and permitting. Um, but beyond that, we're really in the early stages of getting feedback from customers and of really understanding how we can improve um, customer service to speak to this NRS goal. Um, number two on this slide, uh, we have for many years been offering courtesy inspections for businesses who are looking to locate within Wheat Ridge. Um, for bigger projects or for major changes in use, we require a pre-application meeting. Um, and those meetings are really meant to be a service more than a requirement. They give us the chance to have our planning, our building, and our engineering staff available in a small group setting to educate business owners on rules and reviews and timelines um, with their specific proposal in mind. And it's that early interaction, the courtesy inspection and the pre-app uh, that allows us to identify as issues early in the process. So we do feel like we have a good model um, for tools that are working. And then lastly, on the city's website, um, you'll recall when you are on the homepage, sort of the black bar at the top has four options and one of them is entitled doing business. And that's where Steve Ard, our economic development manager has compiled a number of resources and links and FAQs and guides to help businesses navigate opening in Wee Ridge. So those are some of the things we've tackled to date. Um, and then Allie will take us into sort of what the future could look like. Awesome, thanks so much, Lauren, that was great. So some planned upcoming activities. Um, you very recently, in um, recent weeks, approved a new full-time position 
we recall that, to support um, the city's licensing program. And while this position will focus primarily on some of the city's new licensing programs, it will provide greater customer service support to general business business licensing programs as well. And I'm happy to report that we've completed the interview process. Um, we're in, so we're in the final stages of recruitment for that position. And that will make, um, I think, a really a big difference in the level of customer service support that we're able to provide. Next, I just want to briefly touch on um, an effort that has been underway for in, in recent years to simplify Colorado's um, complex sales and use tax laws and processes. So um, this was um, an initiative launched by the Colorado legislature, um, a committee comprised of legislators, um, CML, community, um, Colorado Municipal League staff, local government finance professionals have developed a framework um, and a program to provide an optional one-stop shop for businesses to remit state and local government taxes. Um, Wheat Ridge has been taking, it's called um, SUTS, the Sales and Use Tax System. Wheat Ridge has taken a wait and see approach on that. Um, and we, in, in the last few months, actually, the majority of home rule municipalities have jumped on board. So now more than 70% of, of home rule municipalities in Colorado have joined this initiative. So um, Finance Manager Mark Colvin has been, has been working on this. And our recommendation is that we actually do the same. We follow suit and join this program. The city will still retain its ability to collect um, our own tax, just like we do. It's an optional program for businesses to sort of simplify their processes. So we won't go into lots of detail on that tonight, but what we would like to do is bring it back to a study session um, in, the, in the coming months for you to learn. We can go through sort of what, what it will entail, including a chapter 22 update, that's our, our, our tax code, um, to align with the state's model code, which in and of itself will help sort of simplify this. So again, our timeline here is that we'll present more information and a draft of an ordinance in a study session format in the third quarter, um, if that sounds good to you all. Um, so that's that. And then the final, the final um, sort of planned upcoming activity and a, an essential step to realizing this priority is to conduct an analysis and process improvement effort around our enterprise resource planning program or, or our ERP. And I realize this is not what you had in mind when you talked about this priority, but let me explain. Um, so the city currently uses um, what we would consider to be a legacy system, um, American Data Group or ADG, as our backbone, as our financial backbone, our software program, if you like, for our financials, um, that our revenue, so our tax, our taxes, include sort of how we do things on the back end, but also how customers remit them, business licensing, payroll, personnel, building permits, court programs, all of this is sort of this, this big program. This system has served the city well for a number of years, um, but it's become clearer and clearer to us to stop. And certainly I think to customers while they may not know it, they're not having the best experience that we've likely outgrown it. And we need something a bit more sophisticated to meet our needs. So the first step in all of this um, is to hire and uh, hire someone to help us really improve our current processes. So improve our workflows um, and then determine exactly what the city really does need. This was a budgeted and planned activity in 2020. In fact, we had conducted the first part of the solicitation process and we put it on hold when the pandemic hit for two reasons. One, we put all what we considered to be discretionary spending on hold, as you recall. And two, frankly, staff did not have the capacity. As you know, the workload associated with the pandemic skyrocketed for us. And so this was something that just sort of had to go in the back burner. We did not budget it in 21. Again, we budgeted, as you know, very conservatively. Um, but what this really will do is take our systems and the way that we work internally and improve it. And on the front end for customers, it will make it much more customer friendly to do business with the city around licensing, around permits, around paying, about, around paying taxes. So our ask um, is really this, this is on the project wish list. It will likely cost, the analysis alone will likely cost between 75 and $100,000. 
Um, we want to get that rebudgeted this year. We're not asking for the money tonight, but we will. Uh, we do plan to bring it back as part of the wish list in the coming months. So again, as you know, we're tracking our financials very carefully and intend to do that soon. Um, we'd like to get the money back in the budget later on this year so we can actually conduct the solicitation and kick it off in early 2022, which would mean that likely we'll be ready to start implementing a new ERP in 2023. And it will likely be a uh, a two to three year process to just implement a new ERP. We want to do it uh, thoughtfully and carefully. So I, I realized that was a lot of explanation there. Um, and so we've got a lot sort of planned upcoming activities, but let's just touch on some ideas for some new activities. Um, we were here last week talking about demystifying government and new ways to sort of educate and inform the community. And this really does align with that. Um, the first on here is to create a comprehensive um, educational campaign really geared towards small businesses. Um, so some ideas to help with these educational materials would include an introductory vi video, sort of similar to the demystifying government idea that we talked about last week, um, a new and refreshed how to open a business in Wheat Ridge guide with some real clear instructions and sort of flow charts that details the process and includes information of how um, businesses sort of can enter the process at different times because in practice, they're often at different points along the way when they first reach out to us. Um, we talked about hosting quarterly meetings like open houses where we invite businesses to come to the table and learn about our, our, our licensing and permitting processes and, and reporting requirements. Um, and then also develop a toolkit for local business associations to use to promote our processes to businesses. So that's one, sort of this educational campaign. And the second thing on here is um, targeted outreach to property owners. Um, and so this is to really develop an outreach strategy specifically for property owners in an effort to educate them about the requirements for reusing and renovating existing buildings, new buildings, licensing requirements for tenants, um, really to try and sort of get ahead of that um, process. So again, I just want to end with a slide that sort of reiterates what we understand um, your priority to be, and that is to improve permitting and licensing processes for businesses with an emphasis on small business. We definitely wanna check in with you on that um, and to provide helpful and clear educational materials to make processes clear, transparent, no surprises with good handoffs um, internally. Um, and with that, uh, the team is here and we would love to answer your questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sheck, and we will uh, open this up to questions from council. Uh, Ms. Hoppy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Ali, for your presentation. The um, the request for the for the ERP. So that is that something that um, that was originally on the wish list. So when the budget was approved for this year. Um, it was under the understanding of there is lots of things that got left out of it, but those were things that we anticipated staff bringing back to us in the last um, quarter. If <clears throat> um, if our revenues were were better than what we were projecting, so is that one of the things that was on that um, list already? Yes, yes, Councilor Happy. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the the assessment, not the actual software right yes yeah, sorry the analysis yeah analysis thank you miss Holtine. thank you mr mayor with us the ideas around the new activities um the comprehensive education campaign for small businesses i think is fantastic and i think a lot of our businesses will really appreciate that um sort of proactive opportunity to better understand uh, how they interact with the city are you guys looking at partnering with any of our community partners on that, like local works or the business district, um, in terms of uh, helping us reach businesses and, and uh, just be more visible in the community? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Councilor Holtine. My part of that is a toolkit that, that, that that's really easy for them to use as well um, to actually share and promote. So you know, um, you know, materials themselves, helpful links. Um, business cards, you know, something that is, I, you know, I think we haven't kind of gotten to the nitty gritty yet, but something that, yeah, is just really easy for them um, to help share. Um, absolutely. Great. And then I have a second question. Um, 
can you provide just a little bit more detail about what the targeted outreach to property owners would entail? I wasn't 100% clear um, what the intent would be behind that and, and who you see receiving it. Yeah, um, Lauren, could I ask you to, to chime in here? If you recall, this was something that came up very specifically from our team me meeting from the community development department as an idea to try and get ahead of, um, well, Lauren, I'll let you explain. Yeah, um, one of the uh, recommendations in the NRS on this topic was just to seek more feedback. So it, it, what we might have been referencing is an idea we've tossed around of do we, are we doing surveys? Are we reaching out to people at the conclusion of a permitting process? How, how are we reaching out to the people who have been or are, are now or could be our customers? So some people come to business licensing first, some people come to permitting first, um, but trying to figure out a more systematic way to identify, um, target, and, and sort of close the feedback loop um, as we assess these different processes that folks have to go through. Yeah, and I think part of it too, Councillor Holtine, is just that, you know, there are some older buildings in our community that, um, you know, we, we want to sort of get to property managers or property owners before they lease them um, mm -hmm. so that everyone's sort of clear about what, what, what can be done and what it will take so that, again, there perhaps aren't any surprises there either between tenants and their owners. Right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Very helpful. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Additional uh, questions from council? We could report that, Ms. Hoppy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask for um, a consensus to, to direct staff to continue moving with their um, planned upcoming activities and their ideas for new activities for our strategic priority of streamlining permitting and licensing. Okay, all those, if you uh, are in favor of that, raise your hand and uh, it looks like that we have consensus on that. Very good, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank um, you, Council. Are there any other, uh, any other questions on this item that you need answered at this time or are we ready to roll forward? I think that's it, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, we appreciate your input. All right, well, uh, Ali, thank you for uh, bringing your team and, and uh, giving us this update on this project. I know it's, uh, it's gonna really, really make a lot of difference on uh, on how efficient we we um, operate as a city and how uh, predictable and the smoothly we operate with our business community. So thank you very much for, for putting this work in there. We appreciate it. Thanks, Marin. Thank you, Mr. Colvin, for joining us so late. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. Okay, that finishes uh, our, our item number two. Um, Mr. Goff, do you have any staff reports for our study session? Nothing else this evening. Thank you. Okay. And uh, I will ask if any uh, elected officials have a report uh, for the study session. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I think we are ready to um, adjourn our, uh, Mr. Dahl. Now, am I going to adjourn our study session? And then we're seeking a motion to go into executive session? Uh, yes. Adjourn the study session, but then re declare the uh, regular meeting reconvene. Okay. After the recess, and and once you've done those two things, you'll be back in the regular meeting, and it'll okay. be appropriate for Ms. Hoppy to make her motion. Okay. I would like to recess our study session and reconvene our meeting, and I would like uh, our regular um, city council meeting for May 10, 2021, and uh, go to Ms. Hoppy for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to go into executive session for a conference with the city attorney, city manager, and appropriate staff under charter section 5.7B1 and CRS 24-6-402-4B to receive legal advice concerning Joy, Joy Williams Barn Historic designation. I further move to, adjourn, to adjourn the city council meeting at the conclusion of the executive session. Thank you, is there a second to the motion? Okay, second by Ms. Dozman. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Dozman? Yeah, so I just had a question. So we're leaving this meeting and, and joining the Zoom, that link that was sent by Dahl? Yes. Okay. yes that, that's that's and correct. We'll, and, and then that's we'll, correct. You have a, yeah. Right, and then we'll adjourn from that so we won't have to hop back on this one. You will not have to hop back on this one. The motion 
okay. provides for that. So as long as you've got the executive session Zoom link, uh, you're you're good. All right, wonderful. Thank you. Yep, Thank sir, you. Good to have that. Are there any? Uh, I hope I do. So we'll. Okay. we'll um, is there any more discussion on the motion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by raising your hand and will the clerk please record the votes. Mr. Mayor, the motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you very much. So we are going to go into executive session and uh, I think we should take uh, just uh, not quite a 10 minute break, but a short, a short uh, eight to 10 minute break right now and then log back on to the link that you have. Uh, and then we will go into executive session. Okay, so we will exit this session. Thank you all, and we'll see you in executive session. <laughs>